The second point is that when we speak about Islam, and this is very important, and the people who are studying Islam today in think tanks, in universities, going to the primary sources, are recognizing when they look at history that Islam is not a religion in the Western sense of the term. In the Western sense, your religion is your dogma, who you believe as God, and um, you know, you might worship on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, but when Monday comes, you go back to work as an American. But when we say in Arabic, inna dina and Allah al-Islam, that surely the way of life, the word deen, surely the way of life with the Creator is Islam. And so what that means is that the word deen is a way of life. So in other words, in a deen, it's not just your religious dogma. It is a belief that pervades everything that you do. So in other words, your economic life, your social life, your political life, all different aspects of your existence are affected by your deen. And this is very germane to what I, I am about to say in terms of the, the, the legacy of Islam in Spain and further on. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, we are taught, was the last of this long series of prophets and messengers. And he said that the prophets and messengers who included, according to our belief, Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Jacob and Noah, you, Joseph and all the different prophets of monotheism, he said that it is like a, a building, a beautiful building, and the people looked at the building and there was one place that was empty. And he said, I am that brick. I am the last part of the building and with me is the seal or the finality of prophethood. Just before he died, <coughs> or the year before he died, he made what is called the Arafat Sermon. And in this sermon, he established that the people should worship nothing but the Creator, that all of their business dealings should be done in economic purity, that all interest relationships are ended. Don't take interest and usury. That's a serious statement. Because if the oil shacks throughout the world and the people in the Muslim world took their money out of the banks and, and put it in a bank with no interest, you would change the economy of this planet. And that probably is the bottom line in terms of why some people are paranoid about an Islamic state. It's not the other things. But if, if you take those billions of dollars and you start giving loans to people with no interest, then the people who are taking interest and exploiting you, they're in trouble. And so he said all economic relationships should be, should be uh, developed in purity. He also said do not harm other people. Do not oppress other people so that you would not be oppressed yourself. He also confirmed for them that there is no preference of white over black or black over white. There is no preference of Arab over non-Arab or the non-Arabs over the Arab except for taqwa. It is the piety and the right action that separates the people. He also established that men have rights over women, but women also have rights over men. He also established that if you follow two things, he said, I've left you two things. This is the Quran, the book of Allah, and my sunnah, my way. If you follow them, you will never go astray. And this was, was the essence of the message that he left with his followers. And he told the people who are present that they should take this message to the people who were absent. And they took it to different parts of the world. 